when we talk about the heart, we're not talking about the little, the little cute thing we send around on Valentine's Day. We're not talking about the heart. Actually, the heart, the word here used is the same heart, is the same word used for mind or sub-mind. Like, listen, our sub-mind or our subconscious. Listen, let me give you some scriptures. I'm going to give you this text. Here. Give me Matthew chapter 9 real quick. I got to give him this. Ross says, Jesus knew that they were what they were thinking, so he asked them, why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? Now, our hearts ain't got nothing to do with our chest, our bosom. You know, we pray the lesion, we put it on our chest. So we, we kind of sometimes, even, even when you're doing something, you put your hand on your heart like my heart. That's, that's not what he's talking about. Heart is meaning our subconscious or our sub-mind conscious. That the thing that kind of is automatic, like when you hit your toe, whatever, who you really are come out. So we can put some fronts up and put up, a, but we can, when we can think and conjure up our, our front. But sometimes when your subconscious come out, who you re- that's where you, where, where, who you really are. That's where it lives. And your sub-mind conscious. And your sub- this is the thing that just automatic is who you are. It's like a computer. You have memory, which is temporary. You cut that computer off, that's gone. Then you have your drive. That's your, that's your operating system. That shows learn term embedded memory of where the operating system, where everything is stored. You cut the computer off and cut it back on, that's still there. You cut the computer off and cut it back on randomly, that memory is gone. We need, we need to take in information from our temporal, from our just, this is why I, can, I went to college for six years. I got associates, a bachelor's, a master's, a master's. And I could probably tell you about six things. Because I put the information in my memory, got my A, because I had A, graduated with my undergrad, 3.6, my master's with 3.7. I was up there, you know, trying to get my brain in. Because I wasn't just playing at school. I was getting it in. I was playing. But I was playing, too. I can't. I put it in my memory just to get my A. After I got my A, that stuff was out of there. I didn't let it embed into my sub-mind conscious. Into my, I didn't integrate it and store it over the course of time to let it dig down into who I was, into my being. I just used it for what I needed it for for that moment. I didn't find any long-term value in it that I wanted, and I dumped it out. He, says, hey, I, he said, I need This is the thing. This is the thing about the mind. This is why uh, we got to watch uh, substances. Because what happens if the devil can get us to take substances, what happens is it dumbs down our, our, our ability for our sub-mind or our subconscious mind to control us. So now we're under the influence of what you think you're under the influence of. Just about every demon that is waiting to get you. Now we've allowed somebody else to hijack our bodies. We literally open up for demons to come in to hijack us. That's why the dumbest mistakes you ever made. Your one night stands, your got so high, you passed out, peed on yourself. All your stuff happened when you was what? Under the influence. You made a bad choice because you, your sub-mind conscience was suppressed through what? Through spirits. Whining spirits. It's a reason why they call them a spirit. Because it's spirits riding all over the back of them. What I'm saying is we need to protect our hearts, which is what he's saying is our subconscious mind that keeps and holds who we really are in there. Our being who we, what we really stand on, believe is is stored there. We got to protect it. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 23, verse 7. I just need the the, the A part of the verse. Watch this. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is. This is to another time we're saying think and heart been put together. The last verse he says, and he knew what they were thinking in their hearts. Your heart, I'm trying to get you to understand your heart. We need to have a recondition our hearts, recondition our subconscious mind, our sub-mind conscious to reprogram it to be lined up with the word of God. So that way when something first happens, the first thing that spit out is what? What God would say. Years ago it got popular. What would Jesus do? But no, that's serious. We need to reprogram ourselves to when we're about to do something. How would God act, perform, or choose, or make it in this situation? We need to reprogram ourselves. We need to watch our sight through discernment and awareness what we're taking in. When it comes in, filtrate it through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the, through the filtration of the Holy Spirit. Take it into our memory. Realize that's good, that's bad. Kick this out, that's good, that's bad. Through, through this discernment process and let it enter in, 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 in our sub-mind conscious. Twisting and bending us to what God wants us to be. Watch this. Uh, give me uh, Psalms 119, verse 11. KG, KJV, he says, Thy word that I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against it. 
This is why we have so much sin problem. Because there's no word in our hearts. There's no word there protecting us. No word guarding us. So we literally enter into our life's issue and we don't even know what to do. So we do what? Flesh. Because the flesh will always tell you what to do. Our flesh will always give you a solution. Swing on them right now. Take off right now. Just run her over. Now, I never just wondered. I'm, I'm sorry. I got a road rage issue. And sometimes I ain't going to lie. I just be wanting to say, Ugh! I just run into them and just take off. Like, <laughs> but sometimes, like, why would you do that? I hate when you stay in the passing lane for two miles. Move over. You want to run in the back of them, make them spin out of control and keep going. Like, yeah, I bet you won't be in the third lane no more. Like, this is why the enemy keeps taking us, because we have no, nothing in our sub-mind conscious. Or we hear it on Sunday, and we let it hit our memory, and we don't meditate on it. We don't spend any time engraving it into who our being, so we have hit it in our heart. So now, man, God, I can stop sinning. I can work on the things that I struggle with. We just want a show of religion, but we really don't want its capability and ability to change us. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going to give it to you raw like this. I told Pastor John, get out of my lesson while he was preaching to y'all this morning in worship. Give me Romans 12, 1. I'm going to amplify it. Therefore, I urge you, Paul is talking to Romans. Brothers and sisters, he's talking to us, Christians. By the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart. Set apart meaning sanctified. Set apart as a living sacrifice, not a dead one. Some of us, let's be honest, y'all know more than a dead sacrifice. If somebody put a gun to your head right now and I say, deny Jesus, you say, no, you'll take the bullet, but you won't live for it. You won't go home and die to yourself, but you'll take a bullet. I, I say this with us all the time as husbands. Let somebody come in that house while we're standing in there. We're going to protect our family to the death. You're going to think we Tarzan. We're going to come out of the stairs like, ah, 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 fighting everybody. But then she actually get up and get her a glass of water. Man, you just, you, I just got home. But you will, some of us are no more than dead sacrifices. We'll die for them, but we won't live for them. And we understand that, that part's easy just to, just to die. The living part is what's actually harder. Because that means who's going to die then? You. That means you have to die to yourself for them. That's hard. That's the issue. When you got to tell yourself, you don't get to feel this right now because they need better. You don't get to feel this and be mad right now because she needs your love. I can't be mad right now because she needs my forgiveness. Like, that's hard. That's going to cost you sitting there in cold sweats. Like, I'm trying to please you, Lord. But she's making me so mad. Like, but I'm going to do it for you. Like, in there in cold sweats, trying to just honor God the best way you can and struggling. Your flesh and your spirit is struggling. He says, I present. His wife, his wife ain't in here. She with the team. That's why he all vocal. He says, Living sacrifice holy and well-pleasing. That don't mean I can just present whatever to God. He said, I need you to be set apart and holy. He says, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. That just make the most sense. That just make the most sense if God died for you, that you would live for him. That just make the most sense. He said, that's your reasonable act of service. That's just like entry level. It just make the most sense. That you would, if you call yourself a Christian, you would do Christian stuff. Right? Like, if I'm, if I'm a Kansas Cityan, why would I cheer for the Cowboys? Makes no sense. Y'all ain't never seen people that was born in KC and cheer for other teams and just weird. I used to want to punch them. Like, you know better than this. You Kansas City, born and raised. What are you doing? Like, Brady ain't on the Patriots no more. You still a Patriots fan? Like, it's just weird stuff. I'm from Kansas City, so I'm repping the chefs. Like, I'm, I'm running with the red and yellow. Like, if I call myself a Christian, don't I go, I go to church? Like, ain't that the reasonable thing that I would do is come to learn about the God that I say that I love and I serve on time? You know, we like to come in about 1155. Just trifling. Yes, we're trifling. We give God just the trifling bare minimum. Like, I got a point coming up. Y'all, I know y'all going to remember it after I say this. A point coming up later in the year in one of our series. It's called, We Expect God to Accept Our BS. And we put it before him like, see? Take it. And he's like, I'm not taking that. And we're going to go through some scripture. Well, God will reject your stuff. Because he's not just going to accept whatever you want to give him. He has a standard. 
meet the standard or go have fun in your life and do what you want to do. He said, I'd rather you be cold or hot, but lukewarm I'm not going to walk with. So I'd rather you just be with me and be hot. If you want to be cold, go home. Go ahead. I can stand there. But what I can't stand is somebody who try to play me and finesse me and be on both sides. He said, that person I'm spitting, I'll spew out of my mouth. In other words, I'm not rocking with you. We ain't doing this relationship thing. I'm not going to let you hustle me and be on both sides and finesse me. He says, verse 2, and don't be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed. That says this progressive change, this, this progressive, we should be getting better as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your how do we mature and get better in God? A heart recondition? A mind recondition? How do we do that? By presenting ourselves to God in humility and letting him reconstruct our life through the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, our mind. He says, he says, this is the same word used for heart in the other ones. He says, he says, watch this. How do we know in your mind? Focus on godly values and ethical attitudes. Taking your eyes, your sight point one, all for the stuff I have no business on, putting it, focusing your godly on godly values and ethical attitudes. Reconditioning your, your, your music, what you listen to, everything gets shifted and changed so you can line yourself up and receive the information from heaven. Letting it impact your subconscious mind, transforming who you are, and God said, now you're ready for every good work. Watch this, he says, he says, as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly, godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove yourself what the will of God is, with, that is which is good, acceptable, and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Verse 3, for by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone and of you not to think, and just think again, more highly of himself. Why would he be talking, talking about you how you think about yourself? Because he knows how you think about yourself will always go against how God think about you. Yeah. See, Lady P talked about it last night, last week she mentioned, we always want to come in the room and get the biggest, best, brightest chair. When he said, you mean to not think more of yourself than you ought to. <laughs> you need to humble yourself. He says more highly, are you, uh, highly of himself and of his importance and ability. Excuse me. That is what he, uh, 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 that he ought to think. But to think, here's this think word again, so as to have sound judgment, awareness, as God has a, pro, a portion to each degree of faith and have purpose and design and service. He's trying to get us to change our thinking, change our information that we're receiving, pursue God in his order and his holiness, and receive and take that information, compacting it from our memory to our subconscious mind, our sub-mind conscious, and then let that rule and change and, tr and change us. Now we're in God's, now God is pleased with our lifestyle. Make no mistake about it, we have salvation over here, that's through belief. Salvation is free. Holiness is not. Salvation is free. Sanctification is not free. To be set apart and honoring God takes work. That's going to take you dying to yourself daily progressively, as the word said, changing yourself and your thought pattern in your mind to be what God is calling you to be. That's going to take some work. God said, I got your eternal heaven. That's on the blood of Christ. But how you live now and your interaction and proximity to me and how we rock out in this thing is all based on how you live, based on how you're going to recondition your mind and your thinking and your thoughts and line them up with me. He says, in order to renew your heart, you need to renew your mind. Changing the information it receives. After you begin to get new information that's godly, now you have new information in your mind. Now it must be uploaded to the hard drive, changing your characteristics and your performance. I wrote that down. I forgot to tell him to put it up there. Sorry. The whole thing is we want to eventually get to a point where our performance changes. Our lifestyle changes. And that only can happen through us, our discerning of the heart, through sight, and through our choices and behavior. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 10. A sub mind ultimately needs to be subject to the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 5. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. That's when these thoughts come in. That's why I tell y'all everything on YouTube, don't get up, don't stay up binging it. You do not need to be up binging everything on YouTube. I tell people all the time when they want something to listen to, like, Pastor, anything else I can listen to, who you suggest? I will give you some. Tony Evans, go read about anything you can find from him. He's great. I will tell you, uh, 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 Dr. Darius Daniel, he's great. Go read. He can teach you a bunch of stuff that I can't teach you yet. Like, if you want to hear a couple of teachers that I would say put the stuff up, even Mike Todd, I've never heard that man say something that's not out the will of God. 
They, they come for him so much, I don't understand why, because everything he said has been completely biblical. Go, if you need something else, go listen to, church, to Mike Todd of Church Mission Church or I love Tim Ross. If you want some feasting to change your timeline, change the algorithm on your, in your what's coming through your time, that go line up with the right teachers on it. Everything is not what you need in this season. You need good, sound teaching of the scripture in the Bible, and that's going to come into your heart and recondition you. And you will see yourself constantly progressively change. Why well, she says, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture the rebellious thoughts. Remember when I said that eyesight come in and them thoughts of, is God really real? I don't really know. And that stuff start playing with you. He said, you got to capture those thoughts. There's rebellion. They're rebellious. They're rebellion against what you know to be true. And teach them to obey God. To obey Christ. You got to take that stuff and make it submit to your spirit. It is a war. He said, we don't fight like men do. This is spiritual warfare between your spirit and your flesh, always constantly fighting. You make your flesh submit to the spirit. You beat your flesh into submission. 